Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. We're in the Fantasy Trip, the In the Labyrinth book by Steve Jackson Games. We are continuing the uh, playlist uh, or the, the videos on uh, spells for In the Labyrinth. We're on IQ 11 spells. Uh, so we will go through, we'll read what spells you get at IQ 11 and what their abilities are. And looks to me like it's going to be a lot of reading, so hopefully you all will enjoy. So the first spell on the list is Acid Touch. It's a throne spell, so it uh, follows the throne uh, rules for weapons. The subject's hands uh, secrete a powerful acid, which does not affect the subject. It adds one dice to any barehanded damage, so an extra d6. Or can be used to etch stone or ruin delicate metal objects. The acid vanishes when the spell ends. This is a natural ability of some monsters, and alchemists have found clever uses for a strong acid that suddenly vanishes. Costs one strength, so one mana to cast, and if you want to continue each turn, it costs one mana to continue. Control Animal. It's a throne spell. Puts any one animal, wolf, bear, and so on, under the wizard's control. As long as the spell is maintained, works only on real animals. If the target was actually an illusion or image, it vanishes when the spell strikes. A controlled animal will follow mo most orders, including orders to attack its friends, but gets a three dice saving roll against IQ when the spell first hits. This spell does not affect humanoids or dragons, costs two mana plus one per turn to maintain. So it gets a 3d6 save versus its IQ. That's good to know. Next is Create Wall. It's a conjuration. Creates a solid wall in one hex. Looks like a real wall. This spell cannot be cast over a figure or part of a figure to entomb it in solid rock. If cast at a hex containing a figure, it fails. Costs two mana. Delete writing. It's a throne spell. Removes all handwriting, smudges, and so on from a single page of paper held in the wizard's hand. There is no way uh, known to restore the lost writing. Costs one mana. The GM may allow uses on larger areas at a higher mana cost. Harder materials will be more difficult, but certainly one could remove graffiti from a building or an exhausting exercise take the inscription off a gravestone. For most wizards, this spell will never be important, but a security officer will find it saves lives. A spy could destroy enemy records or messages or a magic scroll instantly. A poet could make sure no one saw her embarrassing rough drafts. And, of course, it gives you a clean sheet of paper or parchment, which is not a little thing uh, in much of Sidri, which is the world that in the labyrinth it takes place in. Destroy creation. It's a throne spell. Removes any one thing created by a creation spell. So, where I was saying conjuration, yeah, I mean creation spell. So, these are... Any spell in the book, if you're looking at the book that's marked with a C, is a creation spell. So, has no effect on summoned beings, only removes one hex of multi-hex fire, wall, or shadow, has no effect on a multi-hex image or illusion of a living being, costs one mana. Ferment, it's a throne spell encourages beneficial microorganisms to multiply quickly and discourages harmful ones based on caster's intent. Useful for making wine, beer, bread, mead, cheese, yogurt. It also ages game. In general, it has the time required to make such products and ensures that the quality will be no less than good. This one spell will guarantee you honest, boring, decently paid work in any large town and is taught to non-wizards by guilds like the brewers and the cheesemakers. Costs two mana to affect a single bottle or loaf 
or six to affect everything in a hex. So in a three, uh, I believe it's a three meter area. Or it's a one, no, it's a one meter area. So everything in a three foot area, sorry. Uh, multiple castings will not cut the time further, but may improve the quality of the product. Great voice, it's a throne spell. The subject uh, speaks in a voice which, while not over loud, is audible to everyone within bow shot. Combined with a word of command, this spell can make a wizard such a nuisance that he will be confined until his beard is much longer. Fortunately, it also has military, political, and public safety applications. Costs one mana per minute of speech. Illusion. This one is a uh, creation spell. Creates any one hex illusion. See images and illusions. Costs two mana. Persuasiveness. This is a throne spell. Let subjects of spell speak convincingly. When using any talent, uh, such as charisma, to convince others to do something, a figure with persuasiveness spell on him or her gets to roll one less die when making the attempt. A figure under the persuasiveness spell also gets plus two on any reaction roll the GM makes. The spell lasts one minute, costs two mana, plus one mana each minute it is renewed. Reveal slash conceal. It's a throne spell. This is another multi-purpose spell. It can be used A, to find a hidden object, B, to hide some object, C, to hide the magic spells on an item, or D, to make hidden spells on an item easier to find. If any object is to be hidden with conceal, it must already be in a hiding place, or else it must be very small and inconspicuous. For example, if a ring is placed in the corner of a room and two conceal spells placed on it, a person in the room would not see it unless they made a two die roll versus his IQ. And actually the GM would make this roll. A three die hidden trap with two conceal spells placed on it would require a search to roll five dice to find it. A conceal spell lasts until removed. A reveal spell can help find a hidden object, trap, etc. When you are looking for hidden things, reveal may be cast in a given hex. For each reveal spell cast, any number may be used. One conceal spell in that hex is eliminated. When all conceal spells, if any, in that hex are gone, each reveal spell cast in that hex make each hidden object, trap, etc. in that hex one die easier to find. If two reveal spells were cast in a hex containing four die hidden door, the GM rolling the number of that party would only need to roll two dice against IQ to see the door. Used this way, a reveal spell lasts only 12 turns. A conceal spell on any object will also hide the fact that the object is enchanted and the nature of the enchantment. For each conceal spell on an object, again, up to five may be cast. A wizard examining the object will either detect magic or analyze magic must roll one more die. Each conceal spell on an object affects all spells on the object, including itself. Example, a wizard is attempting to use analyze magic on a ring. He rolls three dice normally, but there are five conceal spells on the ring. The GM therefore rolls eight dice against the wizard's dex to see if he can cast the spell well enough to analyze the ring's nature. By casting reveal spell on an enchanted object, one conceal spell on that object can be removed. Reveal spells have no further effect on an object after all conceal spells are gone. The mana cost for this spell is variable. Used as reveal, it only costs two mana. To conceal an object, the first time also costs two mana. For each additional time conceal is placed on the same object, the cost doubles. The second one costs four mana. The third costs eight mana. The fourth costs 16 mana. And the fifth costs 32 mana to cast. Variations are possible. 
A wizard might choose to put a powerful spell on a sword, but five conceal spells on it, and put another minor spell on the sword, unprotected by the conceal spells. Thus, a wizard using analyzed magic on the sword might find the minor spell and think he knew everything. The rule of five keeps more than five conceal spells from being used on any object, but these spells do not count against the regular five spell limit. A sword could have five conceal spells on it and five other spells hidden by conceal. A conceal spell does not hide an object from the person who put it where it is. If your sword has a conceal spell on it, you don't have to spend all day searching for it when it's in your belt. Next is Reverse Missile. This is a throne spell. Causes any missile spells or missiles or throne weapons aimed at the spell's subject to turn against the one who had fired them instead. When the spell is cast, the player records the fact secretly. He shows it to the other player at the end of the first turn in which missiles were fired at the spell's subject. All missiles which hit the figure are then considered to have hit the figure who fired them instead. Same damage. This may result in replaying part of a turn to achieve the proper unpleasant surprise to the player who fired the missiles. Exception, if a highly dexterous archer fires two arrows at the protected figure in one turn, only the first arrow turns back. The archer is then warned and no second arrow is fired. This spell has no effect against non-missile attacks. Costs two mana plus one mana per turn it is maintained. If the character who fired the missile is also protected by reverse missiles, the missile flies back and forth, one round trip per turn, until it strikes something intervening object or one of the spells cease. Rope. This is a, uh, this is a creation spell. Creates a magical rope to entangle a victim, having their movement allowance. The rope also immediately reduces the victim's dex by two. Each ladder turn the rope remains, it reduces his dex by one more point. So it is minus three on the second turn, the rope remains, minus four on the third turn, etc. To remove the rope, the victim must stand still for a turn, doing nothing else and making a saving roll three dice against his adjusted dex. So as his dex goes down, it becomes harder to remove the rope. A successful saving roll removes the rope, which vanishes. If a figure's dex is reduced to two or less by a rope, he falls to the floor helpless. Note, a figure in an adjoining hex can remove another figure's rope in the same way, by standing still and making his own adjusted dex roll on three dice. The rope spell is not effective against creatures with a strength of 20 or more. For that, you need giant rope spell, IQ 15. Cost of the regular rope spell is two mana for 12 turns and two for each further 12 turns. Scour, it's a throne spell. Cleans one item of a size that can be held in the hand to better than new state, or applies a general cleanup to a person or a mega hex area. Costs one mana. Silent movement, it's a throne spell. Let subject of the spell walk, run, climb, etc. totally noiselessly. This spell will not let you communicate silently. It just lets you move without being heard. Costs one mana to cast, plus one each turn it is maintained. Sleep. It's a throne spell. Puts victim to sleep until he A. awakens naturally, which takes several hours. B. is hit, or C. is shaken awake. Takes two turns by a figure in the adjoining hex. A sleeping figure falls down, does not work on a figures with the basic strength of 20 or more, or on things that do not normally sleep, such as slimes and undead. Cost three mana. So where it says creatures with strength of 20 or more, it's not gonna work on giants and trolls and stuff. Now I might, if there's not one that exists, I might give you an advanced version of sleep uh, a couple IQ points higher that could possibly work on a giant or troll. Staff 2, or Mana Staff. Uh, like a basic staff, except it now has a mana stat to let it be charged with strength, or with mana. By spending XP, the mana stat can be increased from 
its starting zero up to the level of the wizard's IQ. Only the creator may draw strength from the mana staff. So only the creator can draw mana from the mana staff. Your staff is now immune to drop weapon and break weapon spells and critical failures. And this is the last creation spell. It's Summon Bear. Brings a bear, strength of 30, dex of 11, IQ of 6, movement allowance of 8. Its bite does 2d6 plus 2 damage. Its fur stops 2 hits, as if it was armor, to follow the wizard's orders. It costs 4 mana to summon the bear, plus 1 mana for each turn the bear remains in play. And that ends the IQ 11 spells. So let me know what you all think of the IQ 11 spells. See if any of them were very useful to you, if they spark, sparked any ideas, especially if you play other games than the, the fantasy trip. Because it's always good to read spells that are in other games. It gives you new creative ideas on what you can add to games you do play in. Like I play Pathfinder. Some of these uh, uh, ideas give me new ideas for zero level spells, new ideas for other spells that already exist or never existed at all that I can then use. So let me know what you all think in the comments below until we all game again, guys.